And we're back with investing legend Mario Gabelli. Mario, obviously it's a, a tough week, but you've been finding a lot of opportunities. What do you like right now? Give us some specific names that you're invested in. Well, I like to see what the millennials and Gen Z like, live events, sporting events, but I also like to see where there are barriers to entry. On March 29th, March 29th of this year, you're going to have 30 baseball teams open at one time. I want you and everyone that's listening right. to own a piece of a baseball team. And they can do that by buying a company in Atlanta, the Atlanta Braves. And it's symbol is B-A-T-R-A, about 60 million shares, Maria. The stock closed around 22.3. Mm. So you're talking about a billion five. They've got a SunTrust uh, stadium that they own. Uh, they have a... Uh, real estate facilities and they have the Atlanta Braves and over the next three or four years it's going to improve dramatically. All right, Madison Square Garden, MSG, NASDAQ traded stock. You like it? Well, the stock is selling around $24 million. So when I step back, Maria, and I think of the hot spots in the world other than Montreal, I also think of, uh, you know, Nashville and I think about Reno and I think about the Hudson Yards. So here I have Madison Square Garden with some significant hidden assets like the air rights over the, uh, so the stock unfortunately is now trading at $240 a share. Hmm. But you're getting the Knicks, which I'm not sure if Forbes is right, but they put a $3.2 billion valuation on it. So when I do the math, I'm getting that uh, at a reasonably low price. They're building a new facility in Las Vegas. They're thinking about building a comparable facility in London. Those are pretty interesting expenditures, but it's also a subset of live entertainment. I like the idea that right now we're seeing synchronized global growth across the world. And there are opportunities to see that continue, whether it's Japan, which we haven't seen that in a long time, or, or Europe. Now, you put your toe in the water when it comes to GE. Is this... Well, I, I think Flannery is going to basically inherit the deck. He's cleaning it out. There's some very interesting uh, parts of it. Uh, the engine business has been run very well as a crown jewel. The healthcare business is a crown jewel. We own uh, Rolls Royce as an example, and we own United Technologies with Pratt and Whitney. And so, GE engine business is a good business. The stock's 13. It's about 120 billion market cap. So, wow. it's, uh, yeah. What a come down, Mario. Well, it started, you know, we've started nibbling at it for the first time when it was 9 to 10, and mm. where Buffett helped uh, out and a few other things happen. And so they'll skinny it down. They, they'll go through the problems. Uh, they're putting up a lot of money in a pension plan that's going to be out of the way next year. Cash into the pension is over. Yeah. So there are a lot of pluses, and I think uh, two years from now it'll sell a lot higher. Short term, I, you know, it's a lot of background noise. Hard to tell. They're obviously going to do some asset sales. In terms of M&A, is this one area that you're expecting to pick up in 2018, generally speaking, mergers and acquisitions? Because now companies have a lot more cash on the balance sheet thanks to the tax plan. Are they going to use some of that money to acquire? Well, there's deals in the pipeline, obviously, in your own industry, uh, uh, in the media and entertainment world. Uh, obviously, uh, there's a company, Time something. <laughs> at and uh, Time Warner. Yeah, well, you know. Do you think that deal goes through? I have a 80% probability that it goes through the stock is 95 I think you got 10 down because the arms will sell it off but and uh, you're only making 10 up so the expected probability is the st stock is fairly priced given the dynamics I think the Disney uh, Fox deal goes through uh, there's 1.6 billion shares of uh, Disney you got 1.8 billion of Fox you get 0.275 of Fox per share of, uh, uh, of Disney per share of Fox and uh, Rupert becomes a very large individual owner with over 100 million shares wow. of Fox and you have all the mindless investors, uh, you know, the... Uh, the the passive? Uh, well, the mindless invest, the ETFs, they will own about 500 million shares. They don't know what they're doing. And so somebody has to give them light after Iger retires. So it will be interesting to watch how that plays out. Where else are you expecting consolidation? Any other industries well, that you think Well, obviously, I think, I think Viacom and CBS are a natural. I think they'll put that together. There's going to be 20 billion of debt, but they're going to have about 80 billion of EBITDA. And more importantly, they will have only about three or 400 million of CapEx, so huge cash generated. Wow. The question is, you know, uh, how do they do it and what's the terms of trade? Mario, it's great to see you. Always a privilege. Thank you so much. Mario Gavelli, thank you for joining us.